Welcome to the newest show on KFAR. They call this Patriots Lament. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the board today, and I will be helping to facilitate the conversation. Joining me in the studio from Bighorn Enterprises, we've got Josh Bennett, and from Far North Tactical, we've got Aaron Bennett. Gentlemen, good morning. Morning, Steve. Morning, Steve. All right, how are you guys doing today? Amazing. Well, that's... Lee. Yeah, yeah, amazing, fantastic. <laughs> amazingly fantastic. That's very nice. Now, uh, tell me, why did we choose Iron Maiden this morning? The whole run for the hills aspect. Besides the fact the song's awesome, uh, <laughs> uh, it's just the uh, run of the hills, run for your life. I know a few guys, uh, one guy in particular. In fact, that give me a good chance right now to uh, say hello to our buddy that's uh, sitting on our local correctional facility, Mike Anderson. Hopefully, hopefully he's listening today. We're looking forward to the judge listening to his uh, lawyer's rebuttal on the grand jury indictment. He may be getting out here real soon. Aaron and I are the strict belief, very good friends of Mike Anderson, strict belief that he is innocent of all charges. Not just not guilty, he's innocent of all charges and Looking well, forward to him getting out. Well, what's interesting to me about uh, the, the very situation is that with somebody like Mike Anderson, I, I mean, what was their burden of proof to be able to round him up, pick him up, and throw him in jail, basically stick him in a hole? And, uh, I mean, he's being held on the suspicion. Uh, nothing has gone to trial, nothing is, and he's being held and treated like a criminal all this time. It's been, what, two months? Well, the official report March. says their reasoning was Shaper said he would that he would possibly help them. That was their reason for picking him up. Even though he is on tape saying, I don't want anything to do with you guys. Get away from me. Get away from me. Actually, from what I've been told, the grand jury was told that the reason he needed to be brought in was because he lives off the grid, and he's a dangerous man for that reason. Well, and they may as well start rounding up half the people that live in the Fairbanks area. Don't give many ideas. I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, if the justification for arresting somebody is that they live off the grid, holy smokes! It really comes down to uh, the government, or law, not necessarily law enforcement, but the government itself. We've lost the sense of who the citizens are, the people, the power, us. Uh, a few hundred years ago, you did not arrest a citizen for I mean you better have your stuff put together it better be open and closed no ifs ands or buts because taking away a man's liberties is so sacred it's such a huge deal that you just didn't do it lightly which is why we had why we had grand juries why we have grand juries and why we have the citizen jury of our peers is because we not we don't put the uh, individual that the state's bringing on trial. Basically, the jury is trying the government. They're putting the government on trial to see whether or not the government had the right to take away someone's liberty. It's also the reason for the war against Prince John, the signing of the Magna Carta. You know, it's interesting that you bring that up because, uh, you know, you, so many of our the freedoms that we take for granted can be traced back specifically to that document. Not 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 that the freedoms themselves come from any document. The freedoms are recognized by that document and by subsequent documents like the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. All of this has to do with the fact that all of our rights are derived not from government, not from the king, not even from the people, but from a higher source. And how many people really believe that now? I mean, how, you, you listen in the public debate. You constantly hear people talking about this law will give us the right to do such and such. Really? Or they're talking about uh, our um, Joe Navo is on here talking about how our Second Amendment rights are being threatened. Okay. Right. Um, our Second Amendment, our constitutional rights, uh, it basically comes down to where do we get those rights? What are our our rights? Do they come from a document? Are they inherent? Who actually has liberty? You have to ask yourself, I'll ask Steve or Aaron or anyone out there, Do who has liberty inherent to them? Only Americans. Is it only Americans? <laughs> I mean, our documents, our founding documents, you have to remember, they don't give us anything. All they do, 
like our Bill of Rights, enumerates, basically sets in stone, these are rights. These weren't granted here, but we're going to remind government these are rights that these people have, that all people have. We were created by, we were endowed by a creator. All men have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and or property. Unless they live in town, according to Michael Dukes last night, that you can't expect to have freedoms and live inside the borough. <laughs> he actually said that, or are you reading something into that? Um, that's, he didn't say it word for word that way, but he said no one can expect to have total freedom if they're living in town. If you want to be free, you got to go out and buy 20 acres or so and get away from your neighbors. You just can't expect to have liberty. Going back to the trial by jury, um, now we have this thing of uh, having a trial by jury of your peers. And I think that's been kind of corrupted from what it was originally. I mean, your peers are basically... If they live in America, they're your peer. And it's interesting if you look at uh, Patrick Henry during the ratification of the Constitution. He brought up what a, then what they felt a jury of your peers meant. And he said that uh, a subject, he's talking about the Bill of Rights of England, a subject has a right to a trial by his peers. What is meant by his peers? Those who reside near him, his neighbors, and who are well acquainted with his character and his situation in life. Now, you basically get tried by people who've never heard of you except for in the news, and they get to have their opinion brought. Actually, even worse than that, now. Josh, if they know you, then they get um, they can't be on the jury. Correct. They ask you, they ask them, jurors, if do they you know, know the defendant. If they know the defendant. If they do, then they're not allowed to be on there. Well, I, again, the burden of proof. The whole point of the way the jury system was set up and, and the entire justice system it was supposed to be to make the burden of proof high and hard for government. So the government could not just willy-nilly round up people and throw them in jail for whatever reason and, and, and get rid of your political enemies. Uh, I, I mean, the whole point of it was that you had to actually have proof that this was an evildoer and, and not just an enemy of the state. Well, basically what we, we citizens, we pe the people, the reason that it is where, where we are now, the reason that it is, is we have lost our own knowledge of what our liberty means. We actually think, you read in the paper, you read online, you listen to the radio, all the nice talk shows on that other station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They talk about rights and your rights and this, your rights that, and all of them qualify it with they're granted by someone. I was reading something the other day, just what Aaron was talking about, but I was reading it in online about your right, your Second Amendment right, your constitutional right to firearms, to be def defend yourself, to be protected, is under threat by the UN under this treaty that they're going to sign. They can sign all the treaties they want. It does not take away your right to keep and bear arms. They can do whatever they want. They can say that you can't worship how you want to worship. So what? You still have the right. It is your fundamental right, not granted by anyone, to do that. You have to know who granted you the rights, so then you can know who can take them away. If someone doesn't is not able to grant them to you, they are not able to take them from you. And part, part of my problem, too, Josh, in terms of e even just listening to this line of argument, you, you make so much sense, and, and, and you're so right. The problem that I'm seeing in America today is that people are submitting themselves to ridiculous laws that have absolutely no bearing uh, to the way you live your life. They, I mean, they're, they're ridiculous things, things like... Um, the TSA. Why should we all submit to uh, having a, a search without a warrant? Why should we have to present papers to prove that we are who we say we are? It, it's all done in the name of security, but we are exchanging our freedom for th this somehow this sense that we're safe. I, I, <laughs> everybody that they've caught that's been attempting to do a terrorist act has been caught by different means, not the TSA. I, don't, I can't think of a single person who's actually a terrorist who's been caught by the TSA, although they have caught several people who are disabled, 
who have had uh, mastectomies, who have had, um, well, basically, I mean, they, they've what they've caught children, not not wrongdoers, but they they've caught them in this this web of I, what I consider to be illegal searches and seizures, and the the people of America are willing to part with their freedoms. And and to me, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we've been submitting to a bunch of ridiculous laws all along. We've allowed the ends to justify the means, and they never do when it comes to our liberty. Our liberty is not negotiable. It's flat out, no, it's off limits. Your liberty is your liberty. The government can't mess with it. They do every day because we allow them to. Exactly, See, and, and we, we allow them to. So what? But if an individual... Say, like, if Aaron Bennett over there decides he is not going to submit to the TSA, well, he's going to end up in a hole somewhere. He's going to end up next to Michael Anderson. I mean, he's going to be pulled He's going to be pulled out of line. I'm or, coming, Mike. Hang on. Yeah. He's going to be arrested, charged with, at the very least, uh, you know, some kind of a disorderly whatever. But, I mean, you, you think about it. Uh, where are our freedoms gone, and why aren't the uh, people of America concerned about it? I don't. I think that we're too... We've been pacified to the point where we actually like to be taken care of. Liberty, you have to maintain liberty. You have to constantly pursue liberty. You have to constantly be vigilant for your liberty. And if you're not, you lose it. And that's hard to do. Who wants to do that? I'd rather people just rather old Joe Blow or someone tell them what to do and take care of them because you don't have to worry about anything. Then, oh, well, I'll give this up. I'll give that up. At least I don't have to worry about it. I would come and do a break. We are coming up to the first break of the morning here. The opportunity for us to uh, give credit to where credit is due here, our sponsors. And uh, one of the big sponsors, of course, for the show is Far North Tactical. If you are looking to preserve your liberty, you can do it on your own. You don't need to call 911. I'm just saying. I mean, if you, if you want to be a victim, then do not go to Far North Tactical. If you want to depend on somebody else to come and take care of you when some poor decision maker is breaking down your bar, your door, don't go to Far North Tentacle. If you don't want to be prepared to take care of yourself or your family in the space of an emergency, then do not go to Far North Tentacle. However, if you think that you have not only the right but the responsibility to take care of those that are near and dear to you, then may I suggest that the place to go here in town is... Far North Tactical, the corner of 8th and Lacey, right over there, the old Blondie's building. You really can't miss it unless you've got your eyes closed, which if you're the one driving, I really wouldn't recommend that. But if you head on over there, just look for the uh, the log building. It's got the Don't Tread on Me flag out in front. And uh, you know what? That says an awful lot right there. The whole point of that snake on the flag, all coiled up, says, you don't mess with me, I'm not going to mess with you. However, if you do mess with me, be prepared to get bit. And that goes for just about anybody who comes and knocks on your door at 3 in the morning. Unless they're a good friend or unless they got lost, why are they there? you gotta, you got to keep that in mind. And you can get uh, not only firearms but also body armor and a number of other uh, survival tactical gear. Remember, this is a tactical store. It's not a camping store or a hunting store. It's Far North Tactical, corner of 8th and Lacey, one of the sponsors of Patriot's Lament. And we're back. You really got to think about if your friend does come at 3 o'clock in the morning, how good a friend is he? <laughs> well, that also depends on how good a friend are you. Because, you know what, there are certain people that if they're having problems, then I'd, I'd rather they come and knock on my door at 3 in the morning than, uh, That's true. than, than, than go to uh, 